Hey guys, welcome to Mr. Smith's Kitchen. Brian, Mr. Smith, Kitchen. Um, today I thought we would uh, challenge ourselves a little. Um, we're going to do a strawberry shortcake cheesecake, which is a three layer cake. It's strawberry cake on the bottom and the top, cheesecake in the middle. Um, and then it's got a, a golden Oreo uh, crunch on the outside with some strawberry flavoring and so it's like a good humor bar um, similar to the one we did months ago um, only this one's got the cheesecake in the middle I'm gonna do it a little differently than most of the recipes I found it uh, had the uh, uh, cream cheese icing on the outside then these crushed up put on it um, but then you had a uh, cream cheese in between each layer and instead of doing the cream cheese in between each layer, we're going to do the graham cracker, well, it's a uh, golden Oreo crust, uh, the cheesecake, and then we're going to do a uh, uh, jam filling on the uh, layer in between the cheesecake and the top cake. And then we'll do the regular outside with cream cheese frosting and these crushed up uh, with some strawberry flavoring added to them. So, anyhow, that being said, this is going to be not a super long video, I hope, but um, it is going to be one of our more challenging cakes. We've got to make the cheesecake and the crust, make the regular cakes, and then put it all together. So, I'm going to skip the whole, if you're new thing, but if you are, welcome. Uh, coming back, welcome. So on and so forth. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down, uh, notification bell, all that good jazz. So that being said, let's get down here to the counter and uh, we'll start looking at what all we'll need and what all I'm using to make this with. All right, hold on for me one sec. All right, we're down here at the counter and uh, some things I'm gonna need, I, we're gonna need today, uh, a recipe for certain. Um, I'm going to use my food processor. You could just easily crush these up in a bag and then put the butter with them. Uh, before you form in the pan and I'm also going to use my stand mixer you could also use a hand mixer if that's what you got available so um, hand mixers can be expensive and uh, since we made the investment to buy one I try to use it as much as possible but I'll always let you know if there's an alternative to it uh, I will give you all your measurements and ingredients and uh, cups and grams well cups table te teaspoons tablespoons and grams um, that way you uh, you can make this cake no matter what measurements you follow and I always as always recommend using a scale all right so the first thing we do as you just heard is preheat our oven to 350 degrees that way we got it together now we're going to make our crust so our crust is just quite simply uh, eight inch eight inch spring form pan Eight inch spring form pan, uh, and I've got mine sprayed with vegetable spray, and I put a liner in it because we gotta take it. It's, you'll see why. Um, it, it, I don't do it very often, but I try, you know, it, it's a good thing to have. So for the crust, we're just gonna use uh, 13, uh, they're the golden blonde Oreo cookies. Throw them in there, it's right around 120 grams, and we're just gonna. Pulse these into uh, Bolivian. Uh, basically, we're going to make a fine crumb out of them. Oh, first we're going to plug it in. Then we're going to make a fine crumb out of them. Whoa. All right, we got those down to a crumb, which is what we're looking for. That way we can uh, it, it form it will form a great uh, crust. But there's what we look like right there. Sorry, I'm at a loss for words today. It's been a busy day. You know, we're making a cake, I've made some cookies, I made a pie uh, for one Diana Lawrence. Um, who also happens to be my mother-in-law. She's taking it over to the uh, apartment building she lives at, so all the ladies over there may give it a try. And hopefully they'll order some pies. So, with this, we'll set our uh, processor aside, maybe, without dropping it. That's one of the headaches of having not enough room to work with. Now, you can, do the next step in the processor. I just find I get a more even coat if I do it in a bowl. So we've got our crumbed up Oreos. And to that, I'm gonna put a quarter cup or 56 grams of melted butter in there. 
And we're just going to mix this up. Just like that. You want to make sure you get it all coated. Yeah, nice and even. Matter of fact, I'm going to go get a glove and do this by hand. Hold on for me. All right, got a glove. We're going to do this by hand. That way I know I got it good and even and I can feel it. This seems to be the best way it works for me. Now where I can do a, a regular pie crust completely through in my processor, I just cannot seem to get the butter to spread evenly if I don't do it this way. All right, got that nice and mixed up. And what you're looking for when you mix things up real quick, you should be able to hold it like that, squeeze it, and no butter should come out the edges, but it should, it should form a, it should hold its shape. So we are there. All right, now we got to get our spring form pan. So I knock the crumbs off of my glove. Grab our spring form pan. We're just going to take this little bit of dough, or this little bit of crust. Dough. Well, I guess it's kind of dough. Stick it in there, and then we're just going to flatten this out. on the bottom of the pan. Now, it's not going to be real thick and we don't want it to be because we want it to uh, be able to and not crush the cake that's going to be below it, basically. Yeah, we want it to be not the super, it's not the superstar of this, this particular uh, cake. But if you were making this on your own, you know, as just an independent crust, I would double the amount of Oreos that you put in here. All right. Let me finish getting this flattened out, and I'll uh, we'll move on to the next step. Okay. We got a uh, got our crust down there on the bottom of the pan, just like such. And like I said, it's a super thin layer. It's not supposed to be the rock star of the show. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in my oven uh, that we preheated to 350 degrees, and I am gonna let that bake for about five minutes tops. And I'm gonna keep an eye on it because it is so thin, um, it may not take the full five minutes. We don't want it to burn, we want it to turn like a golden brown. Um, and then we'll pull that out, let it cool, and when I come back, we'll take a look at it real quick and we'll move on to the filling. All right, I'll be right back. So, uh, we, I just pulled the uh, crust out of the oven and I'll get you a look at that. And we're gonna move on to the next step for a uh, time issue. Um, yeah, I know videos aren't supposed to run long, but sometimes in order to be able to show you proper and for me to run my mouth because you're the only conversation I get, uh, besides Chris and the kids, of course, uh, I need to uh, talk to you. So there's our crust. And see, it's just got a nice golden brown to it. Uh, I think you can see with all the shininess. And if none of it's burnt, and what we're going to do is we're going to let that cool. What happens is that butter is just really spread in there, it's completely saturated, everything It's cooked into the, the Oreo cookies, and now it'll all become one piece. So, now we're moving on to the filling part. Let me get this measuring cup out of the way there. And for that, I'm gonna use my stand mixer. Like I said earlier, you can use a hand mixer. And we're gonna make the filling. So, first thing you're gonna need for this filling is two blocks, two eight ounce blocks of cream cheese. You want those at room temperature, I pulled mine out uh, this morning, late morning, and they've been sitting out for about three or four hours. I put some, as always, I put saran wrap when I leave anything sitting out on the counter. I'll, I'll put a wrap over it or so, I'll put it in a container or something like that. And what, that way it doesn't get a skim coat, doesn't turn yellow, because like cream cheese, if you let it sit out too long, uh, it'll start to get a yellow on it. And it can, depending on what cheesecake you're making, it can make it a different color. So, we don't want that. So, two eight ounce blocks of cream cheese. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cream this up real quick. I'm just gonna put it on medium. Even though I thought I had it plugged in, I didn't. I'm gonna put it on medium, and we're just gonna let this run until it's smooth, a little smoother, a couple, maybe a minute or two. All right, we got our uh, cream cheese is smoothed out. And that's important. Um, how smooth you get your cream cheese, and, or your, your che cream cheese now, will make the difference in how, uh, your cream cheese, your cheesecake turns out, how smooth it's gonna turn out. And we want a smooth cheesecake, you know, hands down. So now I'm gonna scrape my bowl real quick. Make sure there's no big chunks in there. Now, if you've got like itty bitty little pieces, 
left in there because that's going to happen sometimes no matter how long you leave your cheese, your cream cheese sit out. That's okay. Those will melt. You just don't want any chunks in there because chunks won't melt. They won't get any of the flavors we're adding to it. So you, you want to do your best to make sure you get it as creamed as smooth as possible now. And that way we don't have to worry about it later. All right. So to this, I'm going to add a half a cup, 100 grams of just uh, granulated sugar, plain old sugar, like you put in your coffee or on your cereal. We're going to throw that in and I'm going to turn this on low. Okay. And I'm going to add in two, two tablespoons or 21 grams of uh, flour. It's just regular all-purpose flour, nothing fancy. And once that gets a little incorporated, and I don't have to worry about blood on my face, I'm gonna put it on medium, medium high, and I'm gonna let it run for about I, about four minutes. So, but I don't want to take it above medium, medium high, or we end up incorporating air. We don't want air. Cheesecake is a denser cake, so you want as little air as possible. All right, well, let me get this mixed, and then when I come back, we'll add the next ingredients. All right. Got that nice and mixed up. Let it run for about four minutes. So the next thing we want to add to this is going to be our vanilla and our eggs. All right, so we're going to add one liberal teaspoon of vanilla into this. Oh, let me pause that real quick. Sorry, I got the worst habit of watching uh, scary movies while I bake. Uh, come on. Come on. <laughs> I got kids coming in out of the pool. All right, there you go. So I got one liberal tea, uh, teaspoon of vanilla. It, it's four grams, but I'm probably closer to six, um, which is a teaspoon and a half. Throw that in there. And then I've got two large eggs right there. Um, room temperature, cream cheese, room temperature, everything, room temperature. And we're going to go ahead and put the first scoop in, just like such. And we'll go ahead and get these mixed in one at a time. So we got both our eggs put in one at a time. And when we mix them one at a time, we want to make sure that uh, all the yellow disappears. It gets completely incorporated before you add the next one. And that holds true to pretty much any cheesecake. Um, so now we're going to give it a quick uh, scrape of the bowl. Give it a good stir. Make sure we got all of that. You know, we don't have any real white streaks because it should be like a really pale, pale, pale yellow um, or an off white. But, yeah, not the bright cream cheese white it was a minute ago. And then once we get this in, we will uh, add one quarter cup of uh, creamer. All right. I don't remember how many milliliters it is, and I didn't write it down, but um, I'll leave it. I'll put it down here, uh, what it is in milliliters, which is also grams I learned. So we'll get that in there, just like such. And I'm just using the heavy whipping cream. Yeah, you want to make sure it's got a high fat content. They have what's called whipping cream. It, that's not the same. You want the heavy whipping cream or heavy cream, either way. Uh, I've seen it both ways. And what we're going to do now is we're going to let this run on medium uh, for about two to three minutes. All right. We are good to go there. We got that nice and creamed up. Yeah, rinse off my spatula real quick. Call me slightly lazy, but I didn't want to uh, use up a bunch of spatulas. I have like 20 rubber spatulas. We have gained quite the collection of kitchen uh, utensils over the last couple years yeah which is kind of neat um, there are worse things in life to collect but I mean, even if you know I hadn't all of a sudden um, started baking cakes and pies for people um, as you know they need them I probably we probably wouldn't have half the stuff we have so it, it does get used but Some stuff, and, but I always try to just use what uh, I think you guys would have in your uh, in your kitchen. All right, so we get this good. Give it a good once over. Make sure everything's good. Don't have any lumps. I think we're looking pretty solid. 
not a bunch of air. Like I said earlier, cheesecake should be a denser cake. So, I mean, you're going to get some air in it. That's kind of the nature of the beast. But you don't want too much air in it. All right, so now we'll grab our our crushed shell here in our springform pan. And like I said, an eight inch springform pan. Um, this is like eight and a half inches. I and our our friend Marina, uh, who is mother to Sarah's boyfriend Carson, uh, actually brought this pan over for me to use. Have you ever had something in your life and then all of a sudden you don't have it in your life and you're not sure why? My eight inch springform pans are one of them. Um, we own two at one time and they both disappear. We got her in the pan, good and even. To get the air bubbles out, we're just gonna give it a couple light taps on the counter. We got that good and even, and now we get it in the oven real quick and we'll talk about what we're gonna do. Okay, we got her in the oven. Remember, our oven was preset at 350 from when we did our uh, crust. So, I'm gonna bake this at 350 for, I think it's 10 minutes. Yes, for 10 minutes. And then after that 10 minutes is up at 350 without opening the oven door, you know, we're not gonna open this oven door again until we're done. I'm gonna take it down to 200 degrees and I'm gonna bake it, it says for another 50 to 60 minutes. I'm gonna start checking at 45. Only because I'm using a little wider pan. It's not a true eight inch. It's an eight and a half inch. So I want to start watching, make sure we don't overdo the cheesecakes and it'll be really dry. Um, <coughs> so 350, 10 minutes, take it down to 200 degrees. Don't open your oven at all and let it go for 50 to 60 more minutes. Now you, you notice real quick, we didn't use a water bath. Instead of water bathing at a specific temperature, we're baking high at first to get that initial set in, and then we're going to drop it down to 200 degrees and let it cook and just bake really long. Yeah, so sort of long instead of uh, fast by 20 minutes. So anyhow, when I come back, we'll take a look at the cheesecake and see uh, what we got going on next. All right, be right back. Okay, guys, we're out of the oven. Uh, we ran for about 40 minutes. Probably back to the oven hasn't even gone off yet. Um, but we're done. We want to say in there, I'll the timer and we can take a look at it. It's still blazing hot in the pan, just came out. But there we are, right there. And there you're saying to yourself, Brian, that's not, didn't fill up the pan all the way. Well, you're right, it did not. Um, there's a couple reasons for that, but things you want to look for real quick. I mean, ah. when you when you grab it, it should jiggle a little in the center. And this one, I may have cooked it just a little too long because it's not really jiggling much in the center, but it's still jiggling. So yeah, we'll see. Um, and that's okay. New recipe, right? We're like we're allowed to screw things up. I've said a dozen times. I'm not a baker by trade. I'm a guy who likes to bake. Um, but the next thing we have to do, either way it goes, uh, whether it's overdone, not done enough, which I know it's not done enough, uh, it's fine there. We gotta let it sit and cool to room temperature. And then we gotta put it in the fridge and let it cool. Now, you can go a minimum three hours, four hours in the fridge after you let it hit room temperature, but best practice is overnight. And since it's evening, um, I'm gonna let it uh, cool down to room temperature put it in the fridge, we'll let it go overnight, so when I come back, we'll go ahead and start making our uh, cakes, okay? Um, and we'll probably, I'm thinking, I'm thinking ahead here, I'll probably leave that bad boy in the fridge until we reconvene uh, first thing in the morning to make the cakes, because we have to let those cool too. Like I said, this is kind of a complicated cake. It involves a lot of time and a lot of thought on how you're going to do these steps. Um, but I think it'll be worth it. So. When I come back, we will uh, make the uh, cake layers for the bottom and the top of this. All right, see you in a second. All right, so it's the next morning. <coughs> Excuse me. Look, the cheesecake is in the fridge. It's cooled overnight. It's it's uh, it's in good shape. So I had to take it out of the pan because actually I had another eight inch cheesecake to make and I needed the pan. It's the only one I have, remember? I borrowed it from uh, our friend Marina. So 
Uh, it's but it's sitting in the fridge. Looks good. Came out nice. And uh, now we got to move on to making the can down here on the counter. First thing you're gonna need is a heavy bottom pot. Hey, almost everything you do should have a fairly heavy bottom pot. It conducts heat more evenly, holds it a little longer, and you have less risk of burning things. So to this pot, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a strawberry puree, which is gonna make our cake a strawberry cake. So the first things we need in this, uh, there's only three things we have to, or four things we have to throw in here. And we're going to start with uh, one cup of chopped strawberries, which weighs roughly 183 grams. Um, and that's going to vary a little depending on your strawberries and whatever. Um, so we're going to throw that in there, but it's one cup and you want to dice them up before you put them in the measuring cup to measure them out. And even that can vary a little, you know, doesn't have to be precisely one cup. And we're, then we're going to add some sugar. We're going to add two tablespoons, 30 grams of granulated sugar in there. We are going to take a three ounce pack of strawberry jello, uh, or gelatin, the, you know, to put into this as soon as I get it open. Put that in there with it. And then we're going to add a quarter cup or 54 milliliters, 54 grams of just regular old water. And we're going to turn this on and we're going to, let me get a spoon real quick to stir that up or a spatula, but we're going to bring this up to a boil. And I know you're saying to yourself, that isn't a lot of water. Well, what's going to happen as these strawberries heat up, they're going to release their juices also and bring out that strawberry flavor even more than the gelatin will. So we're going to let this go. Once the water starts to boil that's in there, you're going to let it go for about three minutes. That gives the strawberries time to soften up, let, loose, let go of their juices and flavors. And uh, then we'll move on to the next steps. Okay, so we got our... Uh, Puree has been boiled for three minutes. So all we got left to do is real quick like, I'm gonna use my immersion blender. I haven't used this thing in forever. And we're just gonna puree this up. If you don't have an immersion blender, you can use a, I know, just about anything. You can use a potato masher for that matter. Food processor, regular blender. I just, I have this. I hardly ever get to use it. I thought now would be a good time, a fun time to use it. Okay, we got it all nice and pureed. And let me get that off of there. Uh, one thing I did not mention is you want to go ahead and start preheating your oven, 350 degrees. And we've got our strawberries all pureed. So now we're just going to set this off the side to cool for a little bit. As our oven's warming up there, let me get that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and make our cake. So to make this cake, we're going to do it kind of backwards. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to just hit temperature. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the dry ingredients in the mixer first. So for this, you will need your paddle attachment. Or, I mean, if you're doing this with a hand mixer, just use a whisk for this part. Um, but like I said earlier, I have a stand mixer and I like to get the most. Sorry about that. I had a technical glitch. Not sure what happened. My phone shut off on me. So uh, we'll start over for the beginning. We just got done pureeing our strawberry uh, puree. It's sitting over there doing its cool thing. Uh, in the mixing bowl, like I said, we're going to work this cake backwards and do the dry goods first and then the wet. We got our two and a half cups of flour, 300 grams. And to that, we're going to add one cup, 200 grams of just pure white granulated sugar, same stuff you put in your coffee or your tea or your cereal. Um, then we're going to add, <coughs> excuse me, our baking soda, which is uh, a half a teaspoon, two grams of just baking, plain old regular baking soda. And then we're going to add two teaspoons or eight grams of baking powder and put that in there. Like I said, if you don't have a stand mixer, just whisk this together. And then we'll just put that down, give that a quick stir, get it all incorporated good. 
All right, got that uh, quickly stirred. Now, in a separate bowl, so that I can get my stuff switch situated here. Oh, turn that to the my left, your right. And we'll grab. I don't know about you guys, but baking for me is sometimes an adventure. All right, so we got our bowl here. Let me get you down where you can see a little better. And down. There we go. All right, in this bowl, we are going to put in uh, some sour cream. One cup of sour cream. Cup of sour cream. And actually, let me grab another spatula. For those of you that are new to my channel, um, my kitchen is incredibly small, so a lot of my stuff sits in my dining room. Um, and in this case, with this having so many moving parts, a good majority of my stuff is sitting out in the dining room today. All right, so we got our sour cream in there, one cup. <clears throat> And to that, we are going to add three eggs, large eggs, room temperature. Everything should be at room temperature. Your sour cream, your eggs, uh, any dairy that's being used is at room temperature. And then we're going to add the puree. But first, I'm going to mix these two together. I'm going to whisk these two together real quick before we add our puree to it. Now, when we add the puree to it, we're going to want to mix or to try to cook the eggs because I guarantee that's not cool enough yet to just pour straight in here. All right, get that mixed up. We have puree a good stir here. Set that aside for a second. Now, as I'm pouring this in, I want to whisk. Because even though it's it's cooled down, you don't want to run the risk of it uh, cooking your eggs while you're putting this in. Now, what happens if it does, so to speak, cook your eggs or start to scramble your eggs? If you start to see strings of egg, all you have to do is put this through a strainer and it'll take the eggs out. All right. While we're at it, we're going to, while we're whisking this together, I am going to add in one teaspoon of vanilla. Just like all so. Right. Got that mixed in and all together. Now we'll set that whisk to the side. All right. Now we're going to take our wet ingredients, combine it with our dry ingredients, just like such. Just going to pour that in there. I know you're on the wrong side of it, on the wrong side of the table to see what you pour, but I'm really I'm just pouring it in there. And then we're gonna run this on low medium till everything is combined. Okay, so we got everything combined. As that's mixing on a low speed, I've got one cup, which is 246 grams of butter, and it's at room temp, it's soft, okay? It's soft. We can't even, I can't even hardly pick it up, but you should be able to squeeze it. And I've got it cubed. And we're gonna put this in as it goes. Now that we got all our butter in there, oop, missed a spot. We are going to mix this on medium high, I believe it is. Did I miss two to three minutes? Yep, I'll mix on high for two to three minutes. Okay, so we let that mix for two, three minutes. I think we're in pretty good shape there. We're just gonna take out, wow, that is really nice looking. Go ahead and get this out because we're done with the mixer now. Get it all scraped off here right quick. All right, that scraped off, pop this off. Give me one second, I'm gonna move this mixer out of the way. Right? A little more place to play, space to play. So we'll go ahead and turn our scale on. Now, if you don't have a scale, uh, you can eyeball this, but I'm not going to take that chance. And what we're going to do is 
I went ahead while this was mixing. I got my uh, pans. They're two eight-inch pans. Everything we're doing is eight-inch. I buttered them, floured them, put parchment paper in them, so that way nothing. We're guaranteed nothing's gonna stick. We're gonna give this one good mix, like such. Make sure we got everything together, and then we're just gonna divide this batter up. We got our batter deep batter uh, into the pans. Just gonna smooth them out, make them even real quick. That way we know we get a fairly flat top. All right, so we got our cakes in there nice and even. So let's talk about what to do next. So the next step in this is we're gonna put these in the oven at 300, 350 degrees. We just started uh, our oven at. We're gonna bake them for about 20, 25 minutes. Uh, just like any standard cake, I've even found on almost every box cake recipe with the exception of a very few, it's 20, 25 minutes in an eight inch round or a nine inch round. So we're gonna throw those in the oven halfway through that at about 12 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes. I'm gonna take them and not only am I gonna take these and I'm gonna turn them 360 or 180 degrees front to back, but I'm also gonna switch sides. And you wanna make sure you keep space in between those. You don't want them right up next to each other. You want that air to circulate around them. So when I come back, we'll talk about doing the cakes, what to do with the cakes when we get them out of the oven. All right, see you here in just one second. Okay, timer just went off, so let's go ahead and get down here and we'll uh, get these bad boys out of the oven and talk about what to do next. Uh, in case you didn't notice, cooling rack. Uh, well, let's see if they're done first. How's that sound? I'm gonna pull it out here, set them down. I can see one thing that I'll write down in my notes on this. If I ever go to make this again, is uh, if you can see them or not, but there's little air bubbles surfaced at the top. Now they may recede a little bit as it cools, but next time I know we just need to pop the pan down a little bit. All right, so that one's good. That one's good. See, nothing on the toothpick at all. I'll do this one just so you can see. Nothing on the toothpick at all. We're good. So now we're just going to let these sit here and we're going to let them cool for about 10 minutes or so. And then we'll take them out of the pan. So when I come back, we'll take them out of the pan and talk about what to do next. All right, hold on for me one second. So we let these cool for about 10 minutes. And I uh, these here now, but they've come away from the edge quite nicely. You know, they've, they've shrunk down a little bit, which happens when you make cakes. And but we're just going to run a offset spatula around there just in case, because you never know what could be going on at the bottom. And we're just going to simply take our, I've got it in my hand, but you can use a plate. I'm going to pop that off of there. I mean, look at that, it turned out nice. And then we're just going to simply set it down on, on the rack so that way it can completely cool down. So we want these down to a room temperature and I always go around 45 minutes to an hour. You know, just to be on the safe side, but see how nice those came out of the uh, pans? That's because we use the parchment paper. Prepping is, prep work is everything, you know, I mean, other than your measurements, but just prepping them and making sure life is good um, helps tenfold. All right, well, I'm going to leave these sit here to cool down to room temperature. Uh, they're not real far off, but they're still not room temperature. And uh, when I come back, we will start making the icing and then we can get this cake together. All right? I'll be back in just one second. So we've got the cheesecakes made in the fridge. We've got the cake layers made, the strawberry cake layers made. They're cooling, they're pretty much cool. So we got two things left to do uh, on top of assembly. I know, told you, this cake is, you would make this cake just to challenge yourself or maybe you're throwing a cool party, but either way it goes. Next step, we're gonna make some icing. So let me get you down here, we'll make some icing. Yeah. So we're down here at the counter. Now, we're making a cream cheese icing, and it's really easy. Um, you'll have to forgive my neighbor next door. He's out there saying hi, as always. So the first things we're going to need to do is get an 8-ounce block of cream cheese and one cup, two sticks. In this case, it looks like four because I buy half sticks. Or 246 grams of butter. 8 ounces cream cheese, 46, 246 grams of butter. And we're going to put that 
and our stand mixer and we're just going to cream this up all right get it nice combined and smooth all right we got that nice and smooth and creamy and creamed up it is no longer a block of cream cheese it is no longer sticks of butter which is what we're looking for we want to make sure we don't have any big clumps in there yeah now i mean if you do have big clumps you find one near the end that's okay just keep mixing it it's not like it's a huge ordeal but you want your icing to be smooth right so we're going to scrape the sides of our bowl now just like such and then we'll we're going to put in two tablespoons or two tablespoons two teaspoons of vanilla you have vanilla extract make sure you're using uh real vanilla extract i mean if you don't have it that's fine too but uh, there's a huge difference between the two and to this i've got three cups of powdered sugar here and we're just going to put it in a cup at a time right so that way you know that we don't make a big mess and we want to get it all incorporated really well but your three cups of sugar is 375 grams it's 125 grams a cup and we're going to start out on low to let that get combined if not you will have a face full of powdered sugar okay so we're going to turn this down to low and I've got three tablespoons of heavy whipping cream here. And all this stuff's at room temperature. And I'm going to pour about half of that in right now. And get that incorporated really well. Well, as well as can be. All right, and then we'll stop and we're going to scrape the sides real quick. Icing never takes very long to make. It's actually one of the easier ones to do. And we'll add another cup of sugar. So you want to you want to alternate between your flour and your heavy or your flour, your sugar and your heavy cream, and you want to end on powdered sugar. All right. It, anytime you're doing a dry, wet, dry, you want to end on dry. Why? I don't know, but that's what they all say. So that's what I do. And we're just gonna keep doing this until we got all the heavy cream and all the sugar in there. All right. We got our all our powdered sugar in and our heavy cream, and that's pretty much all there is to making cream cheese icing. Now, if you find it to be a bit thinner than you like it, you can add more powdered sugar, or if it's a little thicker than you want it, because I wrote down on the recipe three to four cups. I think the original recipe calls for three, um, but I know it depends on your taste. If you like a, a nice thick icing, you know, then run with four cups. If you want it a little thinner, run with three. I think I ended up here with like about three and a half you know, cups of uh, powdered sugar. All right, got that done. Then we can uh, get our bowl off, give it a good stir, make sure we don't have any lumps or anything like that in there. Because the last thing you want is a clump of, a big clump of cream cheese in your icing. That's just never any good. All right, I think we are good to go. All right, and there's our icing right there. You know, nice and firm and you know, good to go, ready for icing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this mess up real quick, get all the cakes out, and we'll start uh, putting it together. All right, I'll be right back. Got everything out of the way. Got two of the three cakes out because the third one's still sitting over there. We'll put it on last. So I got the bottom one, bottom layer right there. Easy enough. And then I've got my cheesecake right here, which is sitting in the fridge. Remember, we put that parchment paper on there while well, I left it on there because I can. That way it makes it easier to take apart. And even though that layer is thin of the topping right there, and that's our cheesecake, by the way. Because it's still cold, it you know, we don't have to worry about it breaking. That means we did good. Now, you can see that the cheesecake, well, I don't know if you can't see, is a little better than the rest of the cake. So what I'll do is after I get the center one on and get it, or the top one on and get it centered, I'm gonna cut that cheesecake out around there. So let me get the top real quick before I put the top on because we've got, okay, so in the original recipe, it called for not the layer of uh, golden Oreos, but just uh, the cream cheese icing. And then on top of this, we go cream cheese icing. But I decided instead to put where I'm going to do some strawberry jam on there. 
So now I have homemade strawberry jam. You can use whatever strawberry jam you like. And I just need to get a spoon out real quick. Spoon. And we're gonna put some of the strawberry jam in the middle. I mean, why not? It's a strawberry shortcake, right? And kind of mix it around. Okay, so I got my strawberry topping on there and I went ahead and cleaned up the sides while I was at it so that way we're nice and even. Just a hair more of that topping on there. I tell you, if you've never made your own strawberry jam or your own strawberry toppings, you should give it any topping, but I didn't even necessarily have to be strawberry. You're missing out. All right, let me get that third layer. And there is our third layer. Looking good. There we are. Oh, I gotta kick the side over a little bit. She slid on me. Alright, we're in good shape. Alright, let me get uh, this little mess cleaned up here, and then when I come back, we will uh, ice it. Right. Got everything cleaned up a little bit there. Now we just gotta ice it, and then we'll have one more thing to do after this, and that's to make the uh, the strawberry crunch that we're going to pack on on around it. All right, so yeah, all we got to do is get some icing on there like such. Then we'll smooth it out. I'm beginning to wonder if the jam in the center there was such a good idea. It's wanting to uh, slide around on me a little bit there. That's all. Right. We'll make it work what we do right i mean and your icing doesn't have to be a perfect job because like i said we're going to cover it in uh the crunch topping so we just have to get it iced and then we'll be good to go but all you gotta do is just bring it around and i always just take it off down over to the sides just like such well not always sometimes i use a piping bag but and then we'll just smear it around the top so we got her all iced up right there looking pretty decent i think yeah 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 i'd say we're looking pretty good all right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to stick this in the fridge and then we'll make the uh crunch topping okay down to the last part of this long journey of making this exquisite cake that i think is going to be fabulous so in here i have 24 golden oreo cookies golden oreo and what we're going to do is we're going to pulse these into chunks. Yeah, we don't need itty bitty fine powder, just some chunks. All right, so let me get these pulsed. All right, we are pulsed at least as much as I want them to be because you want them to be chunky. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump these into this bowl and look and see if there's any big chunks left, which I see a few. So what I'll do is see how I've got like whole cookies left in there. I'll just take those out, throw them in there, or you can just sit here and break them up either way. But I'm going to put them back in there, those last four, and just pulse them up real quick. Maybe you can get it all on straight. All right, last four are chunked. So you don't want to find powder because you want it to be all crumbly. Yeah, on the sides, you want to be able to see those crumbles. All right, so to this, I am going to take... Uh, it calls for three tablespoons of strawberry gelatin. I have about a tablespoon and a half in this pack. I should have got a bigger pack, but we're going to run with it. I think that's mostly for color because I'm here to tell you, it tastes like strawberries. So I think we'll be okay there. And then it calls for a quarter cup of whipped topping. Now, there's a couple ways you can go about that. You can, uh, but I, I would recommend just unless you have whipped topping because you bake a lot, just go to the store and get you some Cool Whip or something to that effect. And we're going to put that in there. If not, I mean, you can make your own, but I don't have a recipe. I personally don't have a recipe that's small enough to make just one quarter cup of whipped topping. Uh, it would take so little sugar, heavy cream, um, and you wouldn't have to worry about cream of tartar. And then I'm going to throw a glove on. Now, you can sit here and fold all this in with a spatula i'm just gonna put a glove on and do it just like we would if we were making pie crust i'm gonna uh mix it all in by hand okay so cleaned up that's the important part cakes back out icing's a little firmer if you ever find your icing is getting a little runny when it comes to cream cheese icing and you can't quite get it 
you know, to work. It's not working like you want it to, so to speak. It's a little too runny um, and warm. Just stick it in the fridge for, you know, a few minutes and, and it'll help firm it up. This, this, it helped firm this icing up quite well. All right, so I'm going to do my best to show you what I'm going to do. But I'm just taking bits of this crumb topping and I'm putting it on the side of the cake just like this is all we're going to do and hopefully not make a giant horrendous mess in the process. You know, this is only the second time I've ever done a crumble on the side of a cake and you've been around now for both times. The first time was when we made the uh, three layer good humor cake, uh, which was just cake, no cheesecake involved and uh, made it work from there. This is pretty much what we want to do is just take this and crumble it to the sides so it's like that. Now I'm going to do that all the way around and then when I come back we'll take a look at it and talk about the last thing we got to do. All right, got all the crumbs on the on the sides and I went ahead and did the top. That's what I decided to do with it. I went with half cut in half golden Oreos with some strawberries and then some more of the crumb top in the center. So, what do we do now, you say? Because you're running out of patience, right? Well, this pie, this cake was kind of designed to do that. It was um, designed to challenge us all the way around, right? So, last thing, we, we're done making the cake. We're done. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to put it in the fridge. I'm going to put it in the fridge for about, you know, maybe a half hour, hour, and let it kind of settle down, let the icing firm up. Remember, this cake's just as tired as we are, right? It, it's been through this entire journey with us from starting yesterday evening to now. So let me get this in the fridge. I'll let it chill and set and all that other good stuff. Let the icing relax and get hard again. And then uh, when I come back, we'll finally cut into it and uh, try a piece. All right, I'll see you here in just a millisecond for you and about an hour for me. All right, bye. All right, guys. Um, we let it sit in the fridge and now it's time to cut it. Figure out what... Uh, what we did, good or bad, I think it's all going to be good. I will say, as far as looks goes, that's hands down one of my prettier cakes. Uh, not to be rivaled by the uh, chocolate cake with strawberry ganache, or strawberry icing and uh, ganache on top. Uh, so, let's give her a cut. Let me warm up the knife a little bit first. That way we get a good clean cut. If nothing else, the cheesecake has a tendency to get a little warm on us or get a little cold on us and we'll get it'll firm up that crust so i let it come out for a minute before we uh start talking again but all the same all right butter. There's that. Grab the extractor here. Oh, that looks so nice. I'm digging it. I don't know if you'll be able to see in there or not, but we'll look. Look how gorgeous that is. Yeah, that turned out really nice. All right, so we know it looks good, all the same. So let's give it a, here, I'll give you the close-up of the piece. I think that turned out rather well. Hands down. Couldn't have asked for better presentation, I don't think. But that didn't mean nothing if it doesn't taste good, right? Yeah, it's going to be like, dude, it's beautiful, but it tastes like crap. So let's find out. What do you say? All right, well, I got everything but the bottom pink part on my fork. Hmm. Now, 
never having this before. Ever. I will tell you this. Let me get you down here. I thought the cake was a little dense, even though the toothpick came out clean. So I don't know if it's supposed to be dense like that, because there's absolutely no crumb to it, to speak. Or it didn't raise. One of the two. Now, I will tell you this. It tastes good all the same. Um, <laughs> it hands down tastes great, but I would be curious to work on that cake a little bit more. Yeah, I think I could do a better job with a different kind of recipe. Because that came out almost like a cookie dough, but not quite. But it's good all the same. So, we're not gonna call this one a fail, so to speak. Because it tastes great. But, I'm not happy away with, with the way the strawberry cake turned out. So, this will give me something new to work on. All right, well, I'm gonna eat one more piece. I'm trying. So, I'm gonna play with this one a little bit. I think we can do something different with that cake. I actually have a different idea that I think will work. But, I like the idea. So, I'm going to try this one more time. I mean, you might get to see the, you'll get to see the end result, but almost because the process isn't going to change a whole lot, I don't think. Uh, but we'll see. So, next week, I have no idea what we're doing at all. But I'll figure something out. Always do. Uh, I know for dessert-wise, we're either going to do a... Uh, Nutter butter cheesecake with a twist, or uh, butterscotch pie, I haven't decided which yet. But I'm going to get ready to go on vacation here in about a week and a half, and this recipe will give me something to play with, and I'll keep you updated on it. All right, well, until next week, um, I love you. I love you very much. Tell somebody else you love them, and that you love them very much. This has the potential to be a great cake. So... We will see. Till next week. I'll talk to you later. I love you. Bye.